Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how reabsorption takes place in the nephrons of the kidneys. You should then be able to describe how the cells of the nephron are adapted for reabsorption. In the last video, we looked at how small molecules are filtered out of the blood in the nephron. This process is called ultrafiltration. And remember that ultrafiltration takes place in the glomerulus. We saw that blood in the glomerulus is under a high level of hydrostatic pressure. This hydrostatic pressure forces small molecules to pass out of the blood and into the Bowman's capsule. This includes urea, water, glucose, amino acids, vitamins, hormones and mineral ions. However, blood cells, platelets and most plasma proteins are too large to pass through, so these remain in the blood. So as we've seen, ultrafiltration filters all small molecules from the blood. One of these is the waste molecule urea. However, we've also filtered out a number of very useful molecules, for example glucose and amino acids. So in the next stage, these useful molecules are now returned back into the blood. This is called reabsorption or selective reabsorption, and this takes place in the proximal convoluted tubule. I'm showing you here a close-up of the proximal convoluted tubule and the nearby blood capillary. Remember that the lumen of the proximal convoluted tubule contains the small molecules filtered out of the blood in the glomerulus. So we have water, we also have useful molecules such as glucose and amino acids, and we have the waste molecule, urea. So as the fluid passes along the proximal convoluted tubule, molecules can be reabsorbed from the fluid back into the blood. All of the useful molecules such as glucose are reabsorbed. A large amount of water is also reabsorbed. However, urea remains in the tubule and is excreted in urine. So let's look at how the useful molecules are reabsorbed. This involves a number of stages and you need to learn them. I'll be using glucose as an example, but this could apply to any useful molecule. This diagram shows the epithelial cells lining the proximal convoluted tubule. Now in these cells, Active transport transfers sodium ions out of the cytoplasm and into the bloodstream. And the process of active transport requires energy from ATP. These sodium ions are carried away by the blood. So because of this, the epithelial cells have a low concentration of sodium ions in the cytoplasm. Now, sodium ions diffuse into the epithelial cells from the fluid in the proximal convoluted tubule. This takes place through carrier proteins. It is an example of facilitated diffusion. At the same time, the carrier proteins also transfer glucose molecules from the fluid into the epithelial cell. Now, because the transport of glucose is coupled to sodium ions, this process is called co-transport. The glucose molecules now diffuse out of the epithelial cells and back into the bloodstream. So as you can see, we've reabsorbed the glucose molecules from the fluid in the proximal convoluted tubule back into the bloodstream. Now I've used glucose in this example, but there are actually a number of different carrier proteins. Each type of carrier protein co-transports a different molecule along with sodium ions. A large volume of water is also reabsorbed back into the blood, and the reabsorption of water takes place by osmosis. Now the epithelial cells in the proximal convoluted tubule are adapted for efficient absorption of molecules, and you need to be able to describe these adaptations. Firstly, the membrane on the lumen side of the cells is covered with microvilli. These microvilli provide a massive surface area for reabsorption of molecules. Secondly, there are infoldings on the membrane near the blood capillary. These infoldings provide a large surface area for the transfer of molecules into the blood. And lastly, the epithelial cells contain a large number of mitochondria. These mitochondria provide the ATP needed for the cells to carry out active transport. In the next video, we look at the role of the loop of Henle.